Well, good evening, everyone. I wanted to uh, welcome all of you uh, to our event tonight. My name is Jennifer Reynolds, and I'm the uh, CEO of Toronto Finance International. And Toronto Finance International is actually the organization uh, that leads the Aspire program. Uh, and our organization is a public-private partnership between the three levels of government in Canada and the financial services sector. And our, our leadership really is comprised of the CEOs of the big financial institutions, the banks, the pension funds, the insurance industry, and then uh, the mayor of Toronto and the ministers of finance for Ontario and uh, for Canada. And the mission of the organization is to drive um, uh, investment to the Toronto Financial Center to promote it on the international stage as a leading global financial center. And then domestically, we focus on initiatives which go to the growth and competitiveness uh, of the industry. Things like innovation, driving the best innovation ecosystem we can have uh, both in our big financial institutions and, and, and around it in, in more of the smaller and medium sized firms uh, and the venture capital community. We are clearly looking for great talent in all kinds of areas and, and hence uh, why we run programs like Aspire. Uh, but we're looking for talent, international talent, and then also to develop the talent we have here uh, in our universities here in Canada. And the Aspire program is a great initiative that was started, I guess, close to three years ago now. Um, and really what we're looking to do with the Aspire program is to help post-secondary students find great opportunities in the financial services sector, get some great opportunities through work integrated learning, internships, co-ops, and get the skills you need to transition successfully from uh, your post-secondary career um, into your career in, in uh, the private or, or public sector for that matter. And, and so we do that in a few different ways. I mentioned the co-ops. Uh, we also try to, to find different ways to reach you with different resources and learning opportunities uh, and just networking opportunities to really meet with um, folks in the financial services sector to understand what they do, what kinds of jobs we have, because often we, we think there are actually a narrow, limited number of jobs in financial services, but there are all kinds. Uh, there's really a job for all kinds of people with all kinds of different skill sets. So, uh, and we can talk a bit more of that uh, tonight. But tonight, what we're focused on specifically is obviously a very relevant skill set in today's world, how to succeed in this new uh, hybrid workplace as, as we are moving into a more virtual world, hopefully temporarily. What are the ski skills that you need uh, to function better in that world? And we're lucky tonight to have four fabulous speakers uh, here with us to give us their tips. So with that introduction, I'm going to turn it over to the fabulous Sasha D'Souza, who is our Senior Vice President of our Talent Initiatives. Sasha? Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sorry, is there a feedback? Okay, I think that's okay. Thanks, Jennifer. Hello, everyone. As Jennifer mentioned, my name is Sasha, and on behalf of the Aspire team, I welcome you to this fall masterclass of ours, uh, and I congratulate you for spending your or investing your personal time in your professional development. Now, I hope that most of you, if not all of you, joined us back in June when we when we had our, when we did our first master class and it was focused on how to virtual how to network virtually or how to network successfully in a virtual environment and this master class today builds on that so for instance if you've now successfully networked your way into a job how do you set yourself up for success particularly in this new work environment where you're most likely working in a remote environment or some kind of hybrid working model. To that end, let me give you a quick uh, working definition of hybrid working environment. We've added that to our remote terminology. And really what that means, it could either be that you yourself is working in a hybrid work week. So a couple of days you are working from home and a couple of days you're working in an office. Or it could be that you are working in a hybrid team. So part of your team is working from home and part of your team is working in the office. Either definition applies um, and, it, and both involve a, a, an additional skill set to be successful. So that's what we're going to get in today, to, into today. We've got four amazing speakers that I am inspired and impressed by uh, who are going to share their best advice and answer questions along five particular themes. Um, staying productive and working efficiently. So how do you do that? How do you stay productive and work efficiently when you're working on your own at home? Um, how does business etiquette play out when in a remote or virtual environment? How do you work effectively within a virtual team? So again, if you have a hybrid team, some are here, some are there, nobody's all together. How do you 
build a successful relationship with your manager. So how does that relationship play out um, when it's remote? And then how to deliver engaging presentations. Hard enough to do so in person, but how do you make sure that your presentations are engaging and interesting when you are uh, remote? So our call to action after all of this, for those of you who are already working in, or in a fall work term, we want you to put into practice what you've learned today. For those of you who may not be working this term, we want you to anticipate that you are going to be working in some kind of remote or hybrid working model going forward. And so think about and start to process what you've learned and start to incorporate that, that awareness and that learning into your networking conversations and into your interviews with potential employers. I think employers are going to be very impressed uh, with students who demonstrate that they get that this is a new world of work and that it's a, and it takes a different set of skills and that they're prepared to succeed in that type of environment. So a few quick technical things. Um, you are all muted given the audience size, but we do want you to participate by using the chat box. So that's below at the bottom of your screen. Please submit your questions. We're gonna to get to as many as we can in the second half of our session. Um, and once I turn off the slides, we're gonna use very few slides today. We really want this to be an informal discussion. So as soon as I turn off the slides, I encourage you to go to the top right uh, part of your screen. And if you're not in grid mode already, hover over the active speaking speaker view and you should get a grid view that pops up. Click on that so that you can see the panelists in larger view uh, when we get into the Q&A session, which is the majority of this uh, masterclass. Finally, format of today's discussion, we are going to get to meet the speakers um, and hear from them for a couple of minutes, get to know them. Then we're gonna have a Q&A session with questions prepared from these, by the Aspire team and kind of focusing on those five uh, theme, topic themes. And in the second half, we're going to open it up and um, the panelists are going to take questions from the audience, uh, not directly. You're going to put them in the chat box and then we, I'm going to pick them up and ask them. So let's meet the experts. I am going to now uh, turn it over to you panelists to introduce yourselves, your role, and what you love about the work that you do. Brian, let's start with you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brian Convery. I am the National Director of Early Talent Acquisition at RBC, which essentially is a fancy name for campus recruitment. Um, and I actually support all lines of business, all areas of the bank as it relates to student recruitment, uh, as well as our graduate leadership programs. And um, yeah, happy to be here and thanks for having us, Sasha. You're welcome. Uh, Miriam. Thanks, Sasha. So um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. So my name is Miriam Gohari Najad, and I'm part of the campus recruiting team at Sun Life. Been there for a little over two years now. Uh, I support a number of co-op and new graduate programs there, uh, primarily the actuarial program, but I uh, have my hands in all of them, which is really great. And uh, I think what I really enjoy about campus recruiting and, and why I you know, really enjoy doing this over the last couple of years is just you know seeing young talent being so eager um, to really step into new careers and they definitely drive new perspectives for the organization. So uh, you guys are at the forefront making the, the changes, which is awesome. Thanks for having me, Sasha. Thanks, Miriam. Carly? So hi everyone, thanks Sasha. Um, my name is Carly Suter and I am the Future Talent Lead for Intact Insurance, um, supporting both internal and external engagement for all of Ontario. So for those of you who haven't heard Future Talent before, it also is just a fancy word for um, campus recruitment. So um, similar to Mary, I'm also I think what I love so much about what I do is the opportunity to meet um, students externally and internally within our organization and really work, work to build those relationships. Um, I started with Intact about four and a half years ago actually as a summer student so I was once directly in your shoes and I think that what, that's really what makes me so passionate about my role and really watching other students succeed um, especially within our organization. So thanks so much for having me tonight. Thank you Harley and Naveen round us off. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Naveen Balakrishnan. I work in TD Securities, which is the wholesale banking arm of TD Bank, and I'm responsible for shared services, which is really a catchphrase for everything other people don't want to do. 
and I'm also the head of corporate and investment banking technology. Um, what I love about my job is no two days are alike. Um, no different than we all started out with a great 2020 to be at home. Um, that's my do job really every day, dealing with a, a global organization and I love the chaos. And uh, um, hopefully we're here to share some tips that's helped us out and uh, looking forward to spending the next hour with you guys. Awesome, thanks Dean. I'm gonna stop sharing so that we, and so students, if you wanna put yourselves on grid mode, if you aren't already, uh, before we move on, I thought we would get to know the panelists just a little bit better and maybe on a different level by doing a rapid fire round. Panelists, I'm going to ask you four questions and very quickly, you're going to tell me the first answer that comes to your mind. Uh, all right. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. First question. What job would you absolutely be horrible at? Miriam, go. IT. Carly. A chef. Naveen. <laughs> Brain surgeon. <laughs> Brain surgeon. Brian. A nurse or a doctor. All right. Question two. K-pop or hip-hop? Uh, Carly. Hip-hop. <laughs> Naveen. Old school hip-hop. <laughs> nice. Brian. Freestyle hip-hop. <laughs> You guys are getting this, they're getting this game, Miriam. 90s hip hop. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Question three, where is the worst place that you could get stuck? Brian. Uh, an elevator. Miriam. The middle of the ocean. Carly. The subway, for sure. <laughs> and Naveen. Go chain platform in March when my trains are canceled. <laughs> nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> and fourth random question to, to set the stage here. Video on, video off. Naveen, go. On. Brian. Definitely on. Mary. On. Carly. On. Same. Uh, right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was great. Um, and that sets us up because that's all about business etiquette in this virtual world. So nicely done. Um, now that you're all warmed up, let's turn to the audience for a second. Students, I am going to put up a couple of poll questions in a second, uh, one by one. And we'd like to get to know your experience level with remote work and some of the challenges that either you've experienced or anticipate experiencing in this new world of, of hybrid working or remote working. So let's see, if you wanna put up the first question, as I read it, uh, students, please submit your answers. For the first question is one answer, and for the second question that we put up, poll question will be multiple answers. So first question, have you completed or are you completing a work term this year amidst the pandemic? Your option choices are, yes, you have completed a work term. So if you completed it, it's the winter or summer term. You just started your work term this fall. You have worked remotely, but not necessarily this year or you have no working experience. Alessia, pull up the responses. Let's see what the, this audience is about. Okay, so a lot of you have no work experience. Some of you have completed it already. Uh, so possibly in the winter or summer. All right, that's good. And maybe we didn't give you enough time because there was no answer or maybe uh, it could be anything, okay. Let's go to the second poll question, and let's see if you can put it up. Speaks to challenges. So what challenges did you experience working remotely or do you anticipate experiencing um, that you'll experience when you work remotely? It could be being productive and working efficiently on your own. It could be about staying motivated, figuring out the appropriate online meeting protocols, determining appropriate communication norms, building relationships with your colleagues or your manager, delivering online presentations or other challenges? Maybe a couple seconds. And then Alessia, do you wanna put up the results? Okay, so building relationships is a popular one. Being productive and working efficiently, staying motivated. Yeah, okay, great. That's good, we will, uh, the panelists will keep that in mind as we go forward. Let us get started with our questions. 
Panelists, I'm going to start with asking you a couple of questions that set the stage, and then we'll get into a couple of questions per topic theme. So my first question for you, the summer work term began amidst a complete 100% physical man distancing mandate. To what extent were students prepared for success working in this remote environment, particularly since they would have started right from the start being remote? What were the challenges and were there any unanticipated uh, wins or opportunities? Carly, why don't, why don't we start with you? Yeah, for sure. Great question. Um, so it was really interesting sort of preparing for this a bit because were the students prepared and thinking about what was going through their minds and were we prepared? Like it was so no one was really prepared for what was to come for the summer semester. And that's what I think made it so interesting, exciting and definitely challenging. Um, so we really had to put a strong strategic plan in place communicate effectively, and most importantly, get very creative, both on the employer end and on the student side. So I think the most important thing was for us to make sure that the student experience was not compromised and make sure that they could it could mimic the in-person experience as much as possible when we decided to go fully virtual this summer. So I think it definitely brought on so many challenges, but so many wins. So just to touch on a few around challenges. So I would say mainly technology for sure was the first and second supporting our hiring managers. So, so many of our hiring managers came to our team. Some might have never met their student um, in person and now they're going to be onboarding them fully virtually and supporting them throughout four months virtually. So that was a huge, huge challenge. And I think we're all still learning how to manage employees virtually. Um, and then touching on just a few wins. So I think that the biggest thing for us is that we, our structure is still very regionally. So for example, I support Ontario and we have other leads across the country. So the big win was it no longer matters what office you're in. We are one intact. So let's host national panels, national onboarding. So whether you're out in Alberta or out in the Atlantic, the student experience would be the same across the country. So I think that was a huge, huge win for us. And and lastly, I think working from home seemed pretty cool to a lot of students, especially those that have never had never done it before. So it definitely was a really exciting time. Thank you for that, Carly. Does anyone want to add? Yeah, I would say to what Carly was saying earlier is it forced us all to think creatively of how to onboard, how to integrate into our teams, how to get them gear, right? So how do I get somebody a, a bank issued um, laptop? Where can they go in to log in or if they have issues? So we have to think through creatively how to onboard, how to create that onboard experience, um, what type of security that we're gonna put on the equipment we're giving out, how do we do orientation? Usually we, we're accustomed to doing an orientation lunch or, or after work event to embed all of our students into our teams. And to Carly's point, we had to get creative. We had to do virtual hangouts. We had to uh, do virtual introductions. Um, and so it was uh, really interesting to, to open up those new ways of getting students involved. Um, no longer can I take someone and say, hey, uh, let me introduce you to person outside of their office it is now more of setting up time, getting the cameras on. Um, and, and so we've got great learning experiences that we use to onboard the next cohort. Um, and so coming into this, we were all learning as well. And, and the more feedback we got from the students made us make adjustments for the next cohort. So I'd encourage all the students to continue to give feedback if you're in this situation, because um, this wasn't in any of our playbooks coming into it at all. So um, I would say we're all in a probably a better spot, but it's a dual conversation and we'd love to hear from the students as much feedback as we can um, so that we can make it better for the next cohort. And Nadine, that's a good segue into my next question. It, so we know that the summer cohort was 100% remote. What is happening this fall in your organizations? Are students uh, remote? Are they in the office? Is there a hybrid model? Maybe all of you could quickly um, give a sense of what's happening in the sector. So Miriam, let's start with you. 
Yeah, so for this fall cohort, we're going to continue working from home and that's kind of the direction that we received from our executive team was for the rest of 2020. And I think, you know, looking at it, I don't know if anybody is really going to feel comfortable fully going back into the office until, you know, we have this pandemic under control. And so we needed to, to think about that. We did a lot of check in surveys with all of our employees and um, you know what, to be honest, I think more and more people are getting used to this. Um, you know, remote kind of work and working from home environment. And so there's a lot of future conversations about that as well. But um, I think to Naveen's point, we learned a lot from what we did in the summer. We had a lot of great learnings and we took that and and we've made a lot of enhancements for our fall cohorts and the students, I think, feel a lot more supported this term, which is great. Awesome. And Naveen, Brian and Carly, is it the same thing for all of you or all of your cohorts remote? Brian? Yeah, so um, similarly, we, we put um, safety first as well as mental well-being. And I say that in an interesting maybe way for people to think about it, but as we were starting to think, we're, we're always working six, eight months ahead of the current calendar in, in these roles. And um, one of the things we wanted to do is take that mystery out of it, the extra pressure, the extra sort of wondering if the role is going to be in remote or not remote. Do I have to move to Toronto if I live in Ottawa? That kind of thing. So we are for this term, we're, we're all, we just onboarded last week, we're all virtual except for some of our essential workers who are actually maybe calling on a client in a branch with our teams. Um, and we've taken it even further. We know that um, the new year is gonna be an interesting one as well. And so we decided we made all of our postings that went up for winter this week virtual as well, because we figure between January and April, we're most likely gonna be, um, be in this situation as far as being virtual. Again, taking safety and planning in mind so that students can think about that now and not have to worry about that over the holidays or whatever the case may be. So, um, yeah, so we're looking ahead to, you know, future, but um, for now we're, we're pretty much staying virtual as much as, as, as possible for this point. So I think that sets the stage that this remote, this virtual work environment is here to stay, at least for the, so it's worth students investing the time to figure out how to succeed in it because it's not going anywhere. So let's get into the first topic theme then staying productive and working efficiently. This has been a popular one. When you're working on your own, um, when you're working remotely and on your own, how do you stay productive and work efficiently? So my first question is, is there a productivity risk when it comes to students working remotely? What are some of the challenges that students face and what's your best advice for overcoming them? So Naveen. Yeah, great question, Sasha. I think this is something um, student or not, we all struggle with, right? Uh, productivity, how do we, um, I, I was listening to uh, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan. He was talking about how they did a study and they realized Mondays and Fridays are the most unproductive days um, working from home. And so, you know, we're all gonna have to figure out the productivity in terms of how we work in the workforce. Um, especially as we go into winter months. But again, there's little tools that we've started to embed in our teams. We do a lot more team huddles every day. Um, we try to do it early in the morning. So we are all disciplined to get up, set alarm clocks to have a team huddle. Um, we do check-ins after the workday sometimes. And so to make sure we, we help each other be more productive, we're having active dialogue and saying, hey, look, I work best in the afternoon. And so I'm going to have some of my more productive meetings move to the afternoon. I'm a morning person. I'm going to schedule some of that in the morning. Um, and then we're giving folks flexibility, right? So a lot of times this adjustment requires you to get a bit more structured than you would, you know, being in the office with your peers. And so um, we've given folks a lot of tools, flexibility in their calendars, flexibility with how they want to communicate. And so the productivity as a whole comes down to students taking the initiative, no different than being studious about attending classes, making sure you're meeting your groups, making sure you're doing your community work. We encourage our students to apply the same lens and come prepared day in and day out to have a full day of schedule, set, set time aside, take off some of those distracting things around you and consider treating it as much as possible as physically being in the office. And we're finding some luck with it. Um, we've also found students that said, hey, I like to work best in the evening. And so we've been very flexible and giving them um, output-based stuff versus time-based stuff. 
And so we're trying all kinds of tools and there's no one hat that fits for students or our full-time colleagues, Sasha. Let me ask a related, oh, sorry, was somebody gonna say something? Yeah. Let me ask a related question, motivation. So what practices do you recommend for, to students for staying motivated when they're self-managing their work day? So how do they avoid feeling like the day is dragging on or how do they resist to take resist the urge to take a midday nap if their bed is right beside their desk? Carly, why don't you take that one? Yeah, for sure. I feel like I'm still learning how to do this whole time. So it's definitely tough. And I think every day we're sort of picking up on new skills or tips that work really well. But I mean, I would say, would say some of my advice is being organized and having a strict, well laid out calendar has always, always been important, but it is now crucial to our success for working from home. So especially for a student, just given that they're gonna have so much independence, I mean, you don't have a manager coming to your, your desk. You don't have a team that can see what you're doing and overlooking you. So it is your independence and your responsibility to make sure you're getting your work done and able to manage your schedule. So I think that, Scheduling things in your calendar, both for social, like after work, have a happy hour, make those times to connect with your team, have, play a game. Um, so for personal, also for meetings um, and having those times to, to connect with your team with um, different agenda items, etc. Um, and then also having time for coffee chat. So I think one of the huge things I miss about not being in the office and not being able to interact with my team every day is those more informal coffee chat type of opportunity. So I always say to the students at, at Intact is, why don't you schedule a coffee chat, say every Tuesday morning, meet with someone on your team, meet with a different person, and then once you go through your team, do it again or start to reach out to another student. Schedule 15 minutes on a Monday and meet with another student network and just get that chance to talk about how everything's going. Don't talk about work, um, but talk about something fun and exciting. And it just really allows you to switch up your day. Um, I know this is definitely overwhelming time for everyone. There's so many pros and cons to working from home. So I think it's just finding the balance between those work and personal moments. Awesome. <laughs> Let's get into this topic. Now. Oh, I'm getting some back. Uh, is it me? No. Okay. Let's get into the second topic theme, business etiquette. So we did, Aspire did an um, event last summer on business etiquette. And it was it all revolved, mostly revolved around in-person business etiquette. Who would have known that less than a year later, we would have to think about good business etiquette when you're working remotely. Um, what are some practices that you can share with students around good business etiquette? So from how to dress for success when you're working from home, right through to what's the equivalent of the virtual hand, like what's a virtual handshake and, and everything in between. What's, what does good business etiquette look like now? that we're working remotely. Brian, start us off. Uh, I'm laughing because I think this is one of the areas we're all coming to grips with as well as Carly pointed out. Like, this is not something, you know, look at, I have a baseball shirt on today, right? I, I thought, hey, why not? Um, but, you know, the point is, I think it's also, um, it's it's trying to figure that all out. I think that there's an opportunity to, to um, really communicate and talk to your leadership that you're working with to find out what, what is the norms in the department or what are the norms in the organization? Um, because we've, um, you know, different groups have kind of relaxed different ways of um, whether it's stress or working from home and things like that. Uh, but I, I think just um, overall, it's like, uh, it's, I sometimes explain like even these situations where you're on a team meeting, like we have it and I, on my team, we often call it the family dinner table where you're trying to talk, but someone else just talked and you don't know if you should talk. And, and it, it's awkward, right? And you're like, I didn't mean to talk over you. And you, you know, you try to, you try to get through that conversation. But I think being human is step one because we're all in this together, and you actually start to to realize like different ways to kind of work the conversation. So, um, yeah, I think I think just being open to ideas, communicating with your leadership, finding out what the norms are, and then doing what feels right, um, and ask questions where you might not understand. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this is where observation skills really come into play. You pick up a lot on just when you're participating in the meeting, see what the norms seem to be and and then talk to your leadership and, and confirm that what you noticed is the norm and not the exception or yeah, it's a good um it's a good answer. Thank you, Brian. Let's um in the interest of time, I want to make sure we get through all of the themes. 
let's turn to how to work effectively with your team. I think the business etiquette thing will probably swing back in some of the Q&A from the audience. But when it comes to working effectively with a team, uh, within a team, I mentioned this whole hybrid work environment where some of your team might be in the office, some may be working remotely. How do you lead meetings in a hybrid workplace where if that's the case? And how do you ensure that participants are engaged and they contribute? Are there best practices around holding meetings in a hybrid model? Miriam, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. I think one, the first thing I would suggest to students is get familiar with the technology that you're using and, and speak to your manager about some of the functionalities and features that it has. Um, you know, to Brian's point earlier, you might be in a meeting and you're talking over each other, but there's chat functionalities as well. There's options to, to kind of use, um, you know, animated hands up if you have a question or a suggestion. So, you know, take advantage of some of those features. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's important to, to have frequent touch points at, at this stage with, with the virtual environment. So if you can kind of create this cadence with your team and maybe sit down with your manager and say, you know, I would benefit from having a daily touch point, even if it's 10 minutes with you, just so I can check in and make sure that, that you know, I'm, I'm following through with what, I, what you need from me and what the team needs from me. Um, and then I would say also, just if you are scheduling a meeting, make sure that you're, you know, at least, you know, throwing an email or use a, you know, if you have a chat uh, functionality within your, your company, then use that as an option to reach out to someone and ask them if they can give you 30 minutes of their time to connect. So, you know, there's 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 other ways to do it other than, I guess, interrupting each other in meetings and jumping on, on, on top of each other's conversations. And that actually is a great lead into my second question, which is related. We've gotten a lot of questions from students around when do you use what communication mode? So while while you know, like, you know, if you're in person, you can go to somebody's desk, you can see if they're busy and if they are, come back later. But in this new virtual environment, we've got email, instant messenger, phone calls, video calls, lots of ways, but, but are there protocols around when to do it? So how does a student know, for instance, when it's appropriate to instant to use instant messenger to ask their manager a question versus sending them an email? Now it seems to be inappropriate to just call somebody randomly out of the blue. You send them an email to say, can we set up a call? What are some, what's your best advice around communication in your virtual team in this remote environment? Uh, Carly. I think that this is such a great question and I'm laughing because at times like someone will just start randomly start calling you and they'll be on video and it's like, do you go on video if you're like, hair is a mess and on top of your head and you're not ready for it. So I think it's such a great question. Um, so I think the tough part is that there's no really right answer and I think that that's okay. So I think that when you are Speak with your team, speak with your manager, speak with your mentor. How do they want to be communicated? If you have a question, what's the best way to reach them? Um, and sort of discuss that because it will be different for everyone. And I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, personally, and I think the whole panel would agree that video calls are awesome whenever possible and make sure you give everyone a heads up, maybe even put in the invite, like let's connect on video today. And so I think that's great because when you do give people a heads up, I notice that more people are on video and so it gives everyone a, a good time to connect. Um, and really take the initiative as well that if you want to set up meetings um, with your team, feel free to do that. I had a manager that recently came to me saying that their co-op um, every Friday sets up like a games hour with their team and they actually love that they take the initiative. It's optional, but it just really is a great time to connect and have those informal moments. So um, yeah, I would say it's, it's different for everyone, but all methods you'll probably use sometime throughout the term, but it is everyone's preference. I think, that's a good lead into I think that's a good lead into the fourth theme, which is building a successful relationships with your manager. So Naveen, you seem like you would be a great manager and somebody, a student could build a relationship with you any which way. But what do you recommend um, when, it, when it comes to building a successful relationship with a manager and you're doing it remotely? So if a student doesn't even have an opportunity to meet with their manager face to face once, and this whole relationship is playing out over the four month term um, online. What do you recommend in terms of uh, best ways to connect with your manager and build that rapport and understand their expectations? Yeah, look, I would say, you know, to, to Carly's point earlier is, you know, lead with initiative to wanting to connect, right? So uh, as a people manager, I look out for the folks that are, are honest about saying, hey, I want some of your time. 
you know, 15 minutes of it. I, I got to get through some work stuff and then I just want to chit chat for 15 minutes. Right. And so I think in, in terms of building relationship, because we're all trying to guess in this new world of why I'm being invited to a meeting, why am I getting an IM? It's always good to kind of what Carly was saying, let them know what you want out of the conversation um, because that will then help me prep to say, good, um, I'm not going in there trying to talk about work for 30 minutes. I could use the break as well. I hang out with you for 15 minutes, right? Um, and so building relationship to me now online really becomes about reaching in, um, connecting, you know, uh, I know students on my team send me articles that they think I'm interested in, or, or they send me hate notes when the Raptors lose. Um, so it's it's about really building an authentic relationship anchored off of genuinely wanting to get to know your manager. And trust me, they will know well, who who's really trying to invest the time to get to know their manager or their coworkers. As an example of the games night, um, and and so. You know, I would say practice, right? It, it set up some time, um, have a conversation with your manager, try to find some common grounds, um, try to find some boundaries. Usually managers are also good at giving boundaries. Um, and then, you know, you'd be surprised. People want to talk to each other. As much as we're all in this virtual busy world, sometimes it gets lonely, right? And so it's always good to talk to somebody, just hang out for 15 minutes, not about work. Um, I love talking to our students because they bring fresh perspectives. They bring a different level of energy. Um, they're not always wanting me to approve stuff. And so it's a, I think there's a lot of opportunities to kind of network in this space and do it with, you know, a lot of authenticity in, in bringing your opinion, bringing some views, small connections, build out to a, a great relationship. I love it. Thanks, Naveen. Um, let's get to our final topic so we can get to the, the student Q&A because the, the audience questions are coming in fast and furious. Uh, last topic theme, delivering engaging online presentations. This could be a webinar in and, in and of itself, as you know, but what best tips do you have for bringing a virtual presentation to life? How can students knock it out of the park? Um, what kind of your top, your, your biggest tips for them? Brian? You, you do presentations. Yeah. What's the secret to your success? I, I love this question because I think back to Naveen's point and others here too talking about we want your creativity, we want your new ideas, we want your fresh perspectives. That comes down to presentations too. I remember I had to speak at an external event and I said, oh, it'll look boring if I do it. I got to find a UX designer who can make it look cool and the coffee cups moving and all this other stuff. Like go for it like bring out that creativity in a presentation and you know i mean not to go crazy nuts about how you do it but you can really and bring some new ideas to the table because and there's different ways to communicate and it's not always through words and don't think about focusing and putting a thousand words on a page for a presentation i kind of get more motivated by a thought in the picture and you talking with me more than lines and lines of text as well so yeah, I've learned from some of our students back to the bean point. I, I've actually developed some really externally what I think are cool presentations because the student coached me on how to do it more interactive and more communicative. Um, so I say, think about it. How do you communicate? What are you best at? And what are you comfortable at? And if you don't necessarily even have the expertise, there's many students and other people you can lean on to say, hey, how do you do this? And get some ideas. It's, um, it's about the conversation, right? A presentation is about the conversation um, and people remember stories. So tell stories as part of those presentations. Facts are good. We need the facts and we need the data, but tell a story that encompasses that and you'll capture your audience, in my opinion. Uh, I'll just add one more thing to that, Sasha, is practice, right? Um, you're gonna get a captive audience practice. Go on early, make sure the tech works, share screen, share slides, Look how it looks on the screen ahead of time, because uh, we're all all day staring at different screens, going from meeting to meeting. And so, um, the more prepared you are, the faster you get right into folks' attention. I've been to meetings where it takes ten minutes to set up, and you've lost me, right? Um, and so, I would say, on top of what Brian said, bring that energy, that creativity. Uh, spend the time practicing, prepare for it. And then off you go. So equally, you know, where I find great presentations come and I can tell the person kind of rehearsed through it. They they went in ahead of time. They were the first ones logged in. Everything was set up. 
and they made it a really good experience for me from get. So focus on the preparation and the practice and the tech, because um, we're all getting shorter attention spans and you need to hook us in. Yeah. I think um, the theme that seems to be running through this all, it, it comes back to that good business etiquette, right? So when you think prepare, you think people have less attention spans. It seems to be that meetings are shorter when they're online versus in person. You can have one hour meetings and you better be prepared and show up on time. So uh, it, so I, I agree with you. The thing that I saw is I noticed also now people have the ability to turn off the camera and do something else. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, whereas in the past we would all sit in the meeting room and you can tell who's not paying attention and it doesn't look that good. But now, given where we all are, we're at the danger of someone turning the camera off and off they go to do something else. And so it's ever more important now to have that preparation, that etiquette. Um, and then, you know, you'd be surprised. The audience would love to stay and watch and go right to the end. So um, give yourself that preparation. It's thousand percent worth it. Yeah. I Can I make it. one other quick comment? Sorry, I know we're, we're diving yeah. on this one. The other thing is, uh, don't be afraid to be human, right? Like, don't be afraid to tell your stories and be human. And um, don't think about being robotic. I think practice, like Nadine said, is, is perfect. You got to practice. You got to know what you're talking about. You got to know your subject matter um, as far as that's concerned. Um, but sometimes I also see students and, and inclusive uh, leaders and others over scripting themselves to the point that they can't talk off the chart. Um, and we we get lost in the chart and not the story. So know the purpose of the meeting, what you're trying to accomplish, and make sure you like start with what you're here to do, and then end with, you know, what did we accomplish? Did we hit the objectives? And I think that's important. But you know, don't be afraid to not go off script too much, but don't be afraid to 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 be human about the story you're telling or the information you're sharing. Yeah, I love it. Let's move to the student um, questions. I want to give you guys uh, a chance to answer some of them. Let, this is a great question to start it off. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll address it to Marion, for, um, perhaps. What's the most impressive thing you've seen with your interns or co-op students since March? An example would be helpful. So it gets to that whole idea of how do you impress when you're virtual? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, it's the time to be bold. And I say that to students all the time. You're not in person to shake somebody's hand. You're not in person to kind of make to have those interactions. So um, we actually had a group of students who right at the beginning of March, uh, at the beginning of their internship rather, created a, a social committee amongst themselves and uh, started inviting all of the other interns and co-ops. Um, I think Carly touched on this earlier to kind of social events. And so they, you know, we host our own events on a monthly basis as a campus recruiting team, um, but they were also holding events in conjunction with that. So it was great to see them take the initiative and, and understand that, you know, they just needed that space to be social. And then they eventually implemented Friday lunches where people could just drop in. So if, you know, you were feeling a little down one day, you could essentially just pop into that lunch and, and you know, have a little social hour with everyone. So it was just nice to see that they took the initiative to do that. They knew that there was a need for it. You know, we, we didn't know about it until weeks after, and we thought it was, and, and then they came and asked us for permission, which is great. Um, but we thought it was such a such an exciting initiative to take on. So yeah, yeah. And along the same uh, similar type of question, but different. Um, perhaps Carly, I'll address it to you. How do you find a mentor at a company while you're working remotely? What's your advice to students? That's a great question, and I, I'm glad you asked me that because this is something I encourage every single student is if you don't have a mentor, find one. Um, I've always had a mentor and I really, really see the importance of it. So I would say as a first step, ask your manager and, and don't always make your manager your mentor. I guess that would be another tip is your manager is great for those performance questions, etc. But find a mentor, someone that's new, someone that could be in a completely different line of business. Uh, but someone else within the company or without uh, outside of the company to help you with with challenging um, questions or things that you, you would need um, some advice on. So I think that a mentor is super, super important. So talk to your manager or seek one yourself. Um, I know a lot of companies have like programs put in place for mentors. So that could be another one um, or reach out to someone and ask them um, if they maybe did a presentation or you heard about them on LinkedIn or within the company site and, and they inspired you reach out and, and ask. Um, I think whichever way you go about seeking one, it is really, really important for your own growth and development. And so it's kind of what uh, Miriam is saying, take initiative. This is the time Absolutely. for the to take that initiative. 
Here's a can great. I share, great uh, can I share a bit on that too? Do you mind? Please. All right. Yeah. Um, I was going to also say Carly's to Carly's points too is um, I also encourage students to think of mentor as a verb, not always as a noun. And the fact that you might meet many people within your term that you could reach out to for various things, just like all of us have different people we go to for various things. So as you're thinking about building out that knowledge network across your internships with the organizations, you know, don't be afraid to ask for a coffee and it might organically grow into something that's more than that. Um, I think sometimes when someone comes at me and asks me right out, can first coffee chat, can you be my mentor? I'm, it, it says the word commitment and I, and then sometimes I have thousands of students and I know I'm not sure I can be a mentor to everyone, but, but if you kind of approach it from like coffee chats and connections, like Carly said, and, and then think about that it can be multiple people that play that role in your internship as well. Um, and someone said that to me once and it clicked, so I just wanted to share that. Yeah, I love it. Um, here's a great question. I'm going to address it to Naveen. Uh, somebody asks, when you were working in the office, you could kind of tell how long you should be there by how long everybody else is there. So it was that idea you didn't leave before your manager if you wanted to impress. Right. So a question has come through, what are the norms now? Because I can't see how long my coworkers are working and how. So what, uh, what advice do you have for someone wondering, how do you impress from that perspective in terms of how, how long should I work and that kind of thing? Yeah, just stay logged down all day. Don't log off and let the little green button next to your communicator stay on. No, but in, in seriousness, um, great question. And we're all trying to learn this ourselves, right? Even as seasoned professionals in the business, um, you know, and, and one of the thought leaderships that we're all trying to practice with is outcome based. So every day we all get up, you know, can we make a list of things that we want to get done today? And if I finished it in five hours, does that mean I got to spend the next three hours being unproductive or do I work on other things as, you know, pick up a article, magazine, read something. And so I think we're all trying to challenge the way we, as people managers, see the importance of clocking in. If I can use that word for eight hours, I think we're all moving to a, a outcome based type of performance review where it's. Um, and this is why it's important when you start a term, when you start with somebody, you know, try and get a feel for what a great term looks like to them. Work backwards, right? And say, if I do my four months, what, you know, as a contributor to this team, what will they value as a great term? And in the four months, how do I schedule myself to make sure those outcomes are being met, right? And, and, and this is something not just students, everybody struggles with, right? Now everybody's parenting from home. So how do you clock in the same hours? Um, people are looking after elderly folks at home. So there's a lot of life complexities that get in the way that was once removed for us being eight hours in a, in a building somewhere um, where now it's commingled, right? So there is no right answer, Sasha. I'll tell the students, end of the day, your output and your productivity speaks for itself with your team and your manager. The time you put in, that's really you being a, a professional about your craft. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad that you said that, Nadine, because we just did over the summer this talent talk series where we interviewed talent leaders um, and, and to learn what were the learnings from the pandemic. And what that was one theme that that crossed all six of the organizations that participated was this idea of no longer quantity of work, but quality of work and focusing on impact and, and value because you could you have to trust your people. They're now working remotely there. You just you have to change. Yeah, and, and we're all learning too, to, to that point, Sasha, is no two people on my team have the same lifestyle or the same, um, you know, situation they're in. So it's unfair to say, well, the rest of the team is here for eight. Um, why can't you? Right. So I think we're all being heightened and sensitive now that it is a juggling act. We're all trying to get through a pandemic. And one of the, the topics that I think is going to be relevant is some of these things are here to stay. Right. I love being at home with my kids for lunchtime. Right. And that's now my new do not disturb time to make grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, and so I think we're transforming this new hybrid way of working and we should give folks permission to adjust to how it works best for them to bring out the best productivity out of them. Right. So I would encourage all the students um, be confident in how you manage your day, but ensure that you can deliver what's expected of you from your term. Right. 
There's a relate, there, this is question is a tough one, but I think it's the right one. And I think Brian, you can handle it. So I'm gonna address it to you. How are you making sure this, that students working remotely are doing meaningful work? That whole idea yeah. of learning and meaningful work. Meaningful work. Well, I think it starts with the, the, the initial, um, you know, outlining of the work itself. Um, so, you know, as we all are professionals and sup big supporters of youth and students, um, we want to make sure that the roles that we're bringing you into are, are is meaningful work and that you are contributing. Um, so I think a lot of that goes to the planning stages up front um, in the beginning. Um, and then let's let's be transparent and, and here, and I've had, you know, some students have said, ah, I'm, I'm kind of getting in this role, but I've been doing the same thing over and over and over. And they asked me for advice and said, well, you know what, speak up, go to your manager and say, you know what, I'm, I'm getting this done in really rapid time. And I, I think I can take on some additional work if that's possible. And just by having that communication um, channel, you, you can actually get involved in other things. And you can also look at getting involved in maybe a project that was something that Naveen had on his table or desk that he hadn't gotten to. And he's like, hey, you know what, maybe I can have you focus on this. So I think um, first it starts with the, the, the organization, the employer, and making sure that it is meaningful. And then second, um, you all have as students uh, the ability to drive your own career. And I think you need to think about that as you're in the roles and speak up and see what else you might get involved in if, um, if the job you've been hired for doesn't actually fill your day or what have, have you. Yeah. So can I add something to that, Sasha? This is a great question if I have a minute. Um, what this pandemic also has done is kind of level the playing field. So you get a lot of out of your experience by how much you want to get out of it from a meaningful, because there's no more, there's not enough seats in a meeting room concept, right? So you can have courtside seats to, to any discussion, to any, any meetings, any project sessions, because now there's no limit, right? So I've had a lot of great students who reached out and said, hey, um, I know I'm not in that group, but I'd love to go to their training session for two hours and be a fly on the wall, right? Or, uh, you know, I'd love to go be part of this presentation just to be a fly on the wall and learn about product X, right? And, and I think um, that's where to Brian's point is, if you have the initiative, we now have a playing field where space is no longer the issue, right? Um, you can pretty much be anywhere, listen to anything, uh, and, and people will be, you'd be surprised how many people will give you permission to give you a great rich experience being there and it costs us nothing, right? And so um, a lot of meaningfulness, you have to co-invest with your manager, look to the left, look to the right, what stuff excite you? Uh, and then how do you find a way to get into that forum, the, the meeting and just to be a fly on the wall? And, and I guarantee everybody, you'll walk away with some really good learnings uh, to add on top of whatever you wanna learn. Yeah, that, that speaks to the opportunities that are coming out of this remote work. I definitely agree with you. Here's an important question, and Miriam, I'll, uh, I'll direct it to you. I'm wondering about how to maneuver, this is from a student, I'm wondering how to maneuver talking about mental well-being in these conditions without worrying about being fragile, about appearing fragile or not as able as other colleagues. What advice do you have for students? Yeah, it's a really good question. And, and, you know, I've had some personal experiences with the, with some students having to have those kind of open discussions um, with their managers or even their peers. I think one thing to know is, um, you know, we're all in this together and, and likely the way you're feeling is probably likely how someone else is feeling. So I think we've all had those feelings of anxiety and, you know, not having the ability to socialize has, you know, put us all in, in certain mental states. So um, I think it's important to have those conversations either, whether it's with a mentor, um, you know, Carly's touched on this a lot, is if, the, if you're most comfortable talking to your mentor about it, have that conversation with your mentor, just so, again, having an outlet is, is important. Um, and other things would be just to speak with your manager and have a candid discussion with them. Um, I think at this stage, I would almost frown upon any manager who would, um, you know, look at the student in any way other than just someone that they can, you know, support and be able to accommodate uh, as they need to, to help them be productive in their day to day. So whether that's, you know, reducing their hours or taking off some of the workload, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, that's up to the manager to, to be able to support them as well or look to resources within the company to do that. So I say be open, communicate and communicate 
frequently. That's the other thing as well. One thing I think we learned out of this pandemic is communication is key. So, you know, don't leave it to pile up until three months into your term to communicate that. You know, have those discussions with your manager slowly from the start. Say, you know, this is, I'm feeling anxious about the start of my term because of these reasons. You know, are there things we can put in place to support that? So, yeah. Important question. Great question. And great answer. Thank you, Miriam. The time is coming upon us, so I want to give you all an opportunity to give your one minute what is in your mind and heart, and you've got to get out before this uh, this webinar is up with respect to your best advice to students to set them up for success in this remote work environment. What have you not said yet that you want to leave with students? Um, I'll ask each of you in turn and give you a minute. Who wants to start? Naveen, why don't you go? Okay, I'll start. So. You know, the couple of things I want to leave everybody behind to think about is we're all trying to figure this out together. Um, we need our student cohorts more than ever. In fact, we're starting to invest more in our student cohorts who we feel are, are adapting to the technology and the way of working. And, and, and I think this is a great opportunity for each of you to show up for the opportunity presented and just change our minds of how students can embed in all of these different conditions and contribute. Um, to what earlier stuff we talked about is, is, you know, business etiquette. I think that's super important. Um, set your own brand, right? If you, if you want to set a brand and identity for yourself in this virtual setting, you get to create it, right? Be mindful of your backdrop. What do you have in your room? Do you need to tidy up? How you dress? Um, and all of these things matter because you're trying to build your profile and a brand in front of an audience that you haven't quite met in person to get a pass on. So I would say, you know, use this opportunity. It's a level playing field. A lot of us are just open to hearing from students, working with students and help to think through the experience. You may have some hiccups along the way in your experience, but work with the with the companies. They're trying to figure this out, out too. And, and the more feedback you give will help the next cohort of students. Um, lastly, reach out, find a mentor. I think we're all on LinkedIn. Um, everybody's here to help. Like we're all going through this together, and, and and all I can leave you behind is everybody in every company is invested in students as the next wave of our talent, and so we're gonna get this together. So best of luck to all of you, and uh, it was nice spending this afternoon with you. And good luck. Back to you. Thanks, Thanks Devine. Awesome, Carly. I wish I could just say ditto because I think everything you said was awesome um, and really, really well put. Um, I guess I, I completely agree. Like one of the huge things are that we really are all in this together. I am learning new things every single day and I think I just learned a ton um, this past hour. So I think the big thing is ask for help, ask questions. Um, don't be afraid to seek that feedback, um, even if it is business related or personally a personal issue as well. Be open, be transparent, as Marion mentioned as well. Um, and I love that you touched on creating a personal brand that is very tough in a, in a virtual environment, but I think there are really good ways um, that you can reach out to people and create that personal brand for yourself. Meet as many people as possible, especially in a co-op term. It goes by very, very quickly, so make the absolute most of the four months that you have um, with a company. Meet as many people as possible. Go to other team meetings, go to different training opportunities and really think outside the box. Um, I think initiative has been a huge topic of, of our discussion over the past hour. And I think that that's really, really important. So initiative comes in so many ways. So think about that in all aspects of your work. Um, and, and last, make mistakes. I think that that's a huge one. I think it's so, so important to make mistakes. Um, acknowledge those mistakes and then learn from them. Um, and I think that that's really how I've gotten to where I am now in my career, because I have made those mistakes, uh, but most importantly, learn from them and don't do them again. <laughs> Um, but but that's sort of where I'll, I'll leave everyone with. I just want to say again, thank you so much, I'm Sasha, and to the rest of the team for having us today. I hope everyone took away um, a few tips and tricks, and we all are definitely on LinkedIn, so don't hesitate to reach out um, just with a question or just to connect with us. And thanks again for um, the session. Thank you so much, Charlie. Miriam. 
Yeah, so I, I learned this from my child's teacher this week as I was listening into his online school. Practice makes better, not perfect. And I think that's something that we hear so much in our lives. Practice makes perfect, but it's practice makes better. So I would say if you're stepping into an internship or you're already an internship, use it as a practice round. If you've never presented in front of a senior leader, ask your manager to present in front of a senior leader. Whether you're nervous and can't get your words out, it's okay because the more you do that, the more the, the better it is. If you've never interviewed before, ask a colleague to interview with them. Record yourself, send it to a friend, ask them what they think about it. This is the time to practice in your internship. To Carly's point, make all of your mistakes here um, and then set yourself up for success when, when you're ready to step into a full-time opportunity. So I hope um, everybody took something away today. I want to really thank everyone for joining. Um, for those students who, who know me personally, you know I love my student population. So hopefully we can all keep connected and, and hit me up on LinkedIn. So thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Mary. And, and Brian. Sure. So, um, you know, coming to this event, one of the quotes I shared with uh, Sasha was, you know, uh, something I had read and it said, as, as kids were taught to color in the lines and as adults were told to think out of the box. So don't wait to think out of the box. Think out of the box now. You got hired into these organizations because of a reason of the fact that you are you. And so don't be afraid to be you. Don't be afraid to color out of the lines, ask questions. I think the other thing I share often is act like a sponge as it comes to learning. So if you think, uh, you know, SpongeBob, what's his name? Whatever his name is. <laughs> Happy Fair pants. <laughs> I can't even get that one right. Uh, but you, when you think about it, like soak up everything you can because learning comes not just in prescribed learning, but it comes in so many different ways. And all of us here got to where we are because we picked up, we learned something, and we put it in our toolkit, right? So if you think about learning that way, um, I think that's really important. And um, again, thanks for having me and thanks to the panel for for doing this together. As you can tell, we're all super passionate about youth and students. And as we all said, you know, reach out on LinkedIn, continue the conversation. If there's anything any of us can help you with, we're happy to do that. And again, thank you for thank you for having me and thank you for having us today. Thank you all so much. I was fans of yours before. Now I'm like super fan, a super fan of you all. Uh, you've done a great job. I think you've given so much learning to the students. Students, thank you so much for participating. I hope you've taken a, a lot away from this. Um, to set yourselves up for success again if you're if you're working now or if you're going to work this is the new world uh, and we've got to get ready for it so we hope we put you on the road um, continue your learning with the aspire edge program that we have it's free it's virtual excellent example of a remote program or virtual program that you can build your skills with stay connected to us um, and we look forward to hosting you in our next event Thank you so much for joining. There's a survey when you end, when you get off the call, um, audience, please complete the survey. We take your feedback seriously um, and we look forward to hosting you again. Thank you all, have a great evening. Bye-bye.